Hello and welcome to Sonic Academy with me, Rory, from Hyper Production. And in this episode, I'll be giving an in-depth look at Master in the Mix's Expose application. What this application is good for is getting detailed feedback upon errors that are within your tracks. So not only can you upload full tracks to then essentially find out any errors within the mastering stage, but then you can also find any detailed information and errors within individual stems as well, which we'll be taking a look at in this video. I'll also be detailing what particular numbers mean and basically exploring the application a little bit further, so stay tuned. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the Master the Mix Expose application. Now it's just worth noting that this is a standalone application, it's not something that will work directly within your DAW. It's something that works from your application folder typically on a Mac or your programs folder on Windows and it's basically going to be a, a metering tool, a metering and feedback tool that enables you to spot any errors and things like that. So you think you can go back into your DAW and fix those certain errors within there as well. So when you first start it up, you're just going to see this drop files here. You're not going to see all these tracks here because these are ones that I've already uploaded. So I'm going to click on that button here and then you can simply just go to your folder and basically drag it. You can either drag or drop or you could just click open for them and they will open like this. So I'm just going to point you around to a few features within the application first. So at the top right here, we have a settings function and then obviously your output settings. So just make sure that your audio interface is selected and that your outputs are highlighted and ticked there as well. So you can actually start hearing some sounds. Then down below here is your preset basically. So the way you select presets is at the bottom left here. So we have various different topics that we can create some metering feedback for. So whether it be mastering or you can do stems, so drum tracks, bass tracks, synth tracks and vocal tracks, anything like that. It can then read those and identify any problems within there as well. So it doesn't just have to be mastering tool, but I can kind of see this as people using this mostly for mastering for when they then go and upload their tracks online. Because a lot of these mastering presets are, as you can see here, for SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, so on and so forth. So it's quite a good way to make sure that your music is going to be sounding its best on each of those platforms. Now, the reason you can change the numerical values underneath here is, say you've done a master and you think it sounds fine on that platform that you're uploading it to, then just change this preset to whatever it is that you're getting the metering reading from. So whether it's the loudness meter or the peak or the stereo field or the dynamics, then just simply change that to mix the taste because it's obviously it's a, it's a piece of software, so it's not going to have that sort of same human interaction. So if it sounds good, by all means, go in and change that to your preference. Then at the top here, we have a show tool tips. This is a really handy feature within the application. A lot of bits of software tend to do this nowadays. Basically, if you hover over something that you're not so sure about, it will then come up with a pop-up and actually tell you what it's about. But then also, which is the great thing about it, it'll offer you some advice of what to do next. So whether you've got something too wide, then it might ask you to then rein in the stereo field or if it's too bassy or lacking dynamics or something like that, then go and fix up some of the rhythmical elements and how sort of uh, the bass and kick drum perhaps, for example, might fit together. So that is all very comprehensive in there. And then you've just got your license key and then you have a question mark button here, which is basically just telling you about the software. So that's all the boring stuff out of the way. So what this basically is going to be telling you is everything that's wrong with your track or telling you everything that's right on a more positive note. So in blue is basically saying that your track is fine. So we've got, currently got it on the mastering setting for SoundCloud. Okay. So you can just go down the bottom left here and then you can select all your different presets that you want to be working to. So I must stress, this isn't a processing tool. This is purely just identifying any problems within your music. So then what you're going to get at the top here or to the left is first of all is your loudness meter, which is basically measured in loofs. Now this is a very typical measuring tool for online purposes, so SoundCloud and Spotify and stuff like that, all tend to measure a lot of their sound outputs or at least process a lot of the audio to be measurable by loofs, okay? And you could just sort of switch between short term and sort of long term, so you can get like an average overall loudness metering, and then below it is gonna be sort of your short term, so that's gonna be three second windows. So as you play it through, it's gonna be sort of every three seconds, it's gonna take a reading. So that could be handy if you've got particularly 
quiet build-ups and maybe quite loud drops if you like so that's quite handy and a useful bit of information to know so again you can kind of relate that to dynamics i suppose so making sure that everything sort of flows nice and easily up next is that we have our peaks so basically anything that's going to be hitting sort of zero db if you like then or minus one db so we don't want anything to sort of be peaking and distorting so that's going to be making sure that nothing's going to be overspilling and being distorted so when you upload it online to soundcloud spotify apple music so on and so forth it's not going to be sounding too crushed or distorting at any point so we want to try and reach an optimum level for every track that we upload online and unfortunately it's just the world that we live in today that every different company tends to um, output audio kind of differently but this is where this tool comes in handy because it kind of preempts us for that and then we can also fix any errors that we've got in our music as well then next up we have our stereo field so we have a sort of a stereo hotness meter there go from left to right so if you've got a bit of music that's kind of dip into the left speaker slightly or dip into the right speaker a bit slightly then you can go back into your daw and then correct up any sort of panning that you might have particularly harsh on one on one track or one element or something like that so again go back in there and you can sort of change that and we also have a correlation meter which is sort of relatable to sort of loudness so you want to be hitting sort of plus one for your master then next up we have our dynamic range so this is basically ten, telling us how much space we're leaving between certain elements so the age old thing is trying to get kick drums and bass bass drums or sorry kick drums and basses to try and fit together so if you've just got a constant wall of sound of kick drums and basses and you, you you're going to be lacking quite a lot of dynamic range so this basically identifies that problem for you and then you can go into certain elements and certain areas of your track within your DAW and go and rectify those problems. So let's use this uh, drum and bass for example. So if I then click on this, as we can see, all our track is blue. So, but then we've got a short term reading in this area at the end here, which is basically telling us that we have a bit of a loudness problem in that small section there. But like I said, when you go in the settings and you want to change the presets to maybe up that value just a little bit before it starts hitting red, then go and do so because I can't imagine that bit at the end is going to sound too awful considering the rest of the track is actually sounding okay according to this bit of software. Then we've got a loudest meter, so we've obviously got a lot of peaks and from what I gather, anything that's quite a short little red line is going to be dictating transients so you might have something that's hitting quite hard so that would tell that would say to me that it's a kick drum so maybe we need to go and then attenuate the kick drum and try and process that a little bit and make it sound a bit more punchy without actually just adding up the volume so then that comes into a mixing technique from there as well then in our stereo field we are all good to go so our stereo imaging is fine i would have thought or preempted that maybe the bass could have affected that slightly but then I did go in and rain it and make sure the low end was mono so we've got no stereo phasing issues so that is sounding good as well and nothing is sort of panned too much or we haven't got too many elements that are panned left or right which is great. Then up next we've got dynamic range so at the end here in red we're kind of losing a few dynamics so this bit here is where a lot of our main synths come in so if I just play that now. So we have a lot of synths piled on top of each other. So that would say to me that I need to go back in my DAW and try and create a little bit more space, not only rhythmically, but sonically as well between certain elements to just make sure that everything is being given its right space. So then I'll go back into my DAW, which I'll show you on the next video and we will use it in a real life example. So that is the basics behind this bit of software. So it's purely just a metering and feedback tool that you can then go back in your DAW and fix any mistakes. And then you can optimize your music for any streaming platform or you can just basically use it as a mixing tool. So then you can mix like individual stems to then go back into your mix and then you're going to have a really, really nice informed balanced mix and then you can also create your own presets so if there's something like a, your own website that you upload to and you know the outputs of that particular audio engine that you're using for your website outputs a certain way then by all means get in this bit of software create your presets of what's going to sound best on that website or on your website then you can save your presets and then quickly do the reading for that as well so there are some really powerful possibilities with this bit of software so highly recommend grabbing yourself a copy 
and getting your music in there and getting it sounding good. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you a real world example and we're going to be basically going by the meter readings on our drum and bass track there. And then we're going to be going back into the DAW to then fix those problems. And then we're going to import it back and see if we can rectify any of those issues. So I've been Rory from Hyper Production and you've been watching Sonic Academy. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.